I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a lecture for my Law and Economics seminar about criminal law and economics. And here we're going to have a short video just about the kind of longstanding debate about using fines or prison and uh, to punish uh, different types of crimes. So <laughs> starting in the 1950s and 60s, some economists have argued that uh, prison is inefficient. It costs taxpayers a lot of money, um, right? You have to have the, the facilities itself. You have to provide the prisoners with some uh, live, livable conditions and food, and you have to have guards and so forth. Um, and then conversely, fines bring in revenue. So therefore, they said we should just always punish crimes with fines rather than incarceration. Well, that's a nice idea if people can afford to pay the fines. But what if a lot of criminals are, or the people who commit the crimes are judgment proof, right? So you can have a fine that's a trillion dollars if you want, but if the person is homeless or has absolutely no money whatsoever, you're not getting, it doesn't matter what the fine is, you're not getting anything and it doesn't deter them. And for certain types of crimes, the fines would have to be huge, right? And so, uh, like with deterring violence. And so it's not really clear that you could, if you, uh, let's pick a domestic violence situation or a situation where road rage or where people get in a fight at a bar and they're both um, in a rage or something like that. Uh, it's not clear that a fine is going to deter those that person from uh, using violence. And then the other concern is that a billionaire might be undeterred, so they could just pay the fine as a business expense, uh, in in a sense. And so, if you uh, fine people twenty thousand dollars for um, or a, a million dollars, let's say, for stealing a car, well, if somebody has um, fifty billion dollars, then the, they're not going to miss the million dollars, um, and so they might as well maybe just commit the. The crime because they're not worried about that fine. It's not gonna. It doesn't hurt them because the more money they have, the less marginal value there is for every dollar. Um, and so, we're also keep in mind that for a wealthy criminal, for uh, somebody who is able to earn a lot of money, like a billionaire, even a short time in prison means enormous lost profits from their uh, their uh, other activities or their criminal enterprise. So prison might deter more than huge fines. Um, if you think about the, the head of a large drug cartel, for example, who is fabulously wealthy, but he can't run the cartel from a prison cell very easily. And so uh, uh, even uh, spending six months in, in prison um, might hurt more than paying a million dollars in fines or millions of dollars in fines. Um, also keep in mind that incarceration serves other penal goals besides deterring would-be offenders. It also incapacitates people who are just uncontrollably, have uncontrollable impulses, are just violent and angry and um, fly into a violent rage all the time. Or, and therefore, that's the reason that they pose a danger to society. And so finding a person who really has self-control issues um, doesn't really help, but removing them from society, whether through civil commitment or incarceration, um, in theory could. Now, I'm not a big fan of our prison system. I actually um, am sympathetic to it the prison abolition movement, um, but there are problems with the suggestion, the sort of um, breezy suggestion from economists that we could just fine everyone and save all the, and bring in the revenue and um, not have to spend any money on prisons because there are certain types of certain criminals who um, genuinely pose a danger to society and the fines wouldn't help. Um, okay, uh, on a related topic is the idea of having uh, whether people could get insurance for criminal liability, and we generally don't allow this. So we do allow people to get insurance for legal costs. So you, if you want, there's a few different programs and companies out there where you can basically pay a monthly or annual fee. And then if you are ever charged with a crime, they will um, provide you with a free lawyer or a discount lawyer or have you pay a deductible and then get the rest covered and so forth. Um, but what we don't allow is for you to buy an insurance policy that will cover um, the fine itself if a fine is imposed on you. 
And we're the reason is we're worried about extreme moral hazard problems, right? It would thwart all the deterrent effect of punishment if you could just buy an insurance policy that would um, basically pay any fines that were ever imposed. There's also an extreme adverse selection problem that uh, adverse selection is the idea that um, the people who are the most at risk uh, select in, in disproportionately into the insurance pool. Um, and then you have the other uh, other side of insurers for potential victims um, uh, can incentivize prevention efforts, right? And so uh, if you do buy insurance, you can get insurance. In, for example, if you, uh, there's um, kidnapping insurance, right? If you travel overseas, um, where you can get an insurance policy that will pay a ransom, basically, if you get kidnapped and so forth. But those insurers are going to create um, incentives for you to be kind of careful, right? And they're going to uh, put that into the build that into the pricing of your premiums. Okay, and that concludes our uh, rather short lecture about fines versus imprisonment. <laughs>